Uh, you're welcome. Actually, I think it's a camera today. I, I was just told mine, but it's yeah. technology. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, don't even start that. No, I'm, this probably has gone out live now. So. <laughs> and somewhere in America, there's a five-year-old going, is that dad? <laughs> and why is he moving so funny? You know, I have to tell you all, John Mayer, who's a very nice gentleman, uh, requested that people speak. And I sent an email back saying, well, I don't have a lot of experience in this particular job. I'm, I'm fairly new. But I have some real world experience that might be interesting. Here's my background. And he said, oh, that's great. We'll put you on a panel. I just blew it off, thought, great, a panel. I'll hang out, answer a few questions, or try and be helpful. Then as we got closer, I started thinking, okay, well, what's the panel? What do I need to do? I wrote John. Took a while to get a reply. I'm working on it. Okay, John. Finally, we decided we needed to have a phone call. And at the end of it, I was given an hour-long presentation. <laughs> There's no one else to either side of me. And I said, John, hey, you know, we can do this topic. I said, isn't there anyone else, you know, that please come in or, you know. The co-presenters. I knew they would be here. <laughs> what are we talking about again? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm flexible on the point. <laughs> know anything about tablet PCs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go ahead and begin. Um, my name is Mike Harvey, and I am the Educational Technology Coordinator at the University of Texas at Austin School of Law. And yes, that is a mouthful to have to tell people. Um, I've been there five months now. And uh, you might be wondering, well, why am I speaking here? He's only been there five months. Uh, hopefully, my background will explain some of that. Uh, and, and also, I wanted to stop real quick and just tell you all, what do you all think of this idea? I don't know if other people have done this, but I thought it would be a good idea when you're going to do a presentation. Everybody's always coming in. Everybody's always sitting down. Well, here's an opportunity to brand and to market. Have a teaser that runs beforehand. Not just a plate, maybe, but a series of things. Some information, a little bit of motion. Motion is what catches the human eye. We're, you know, we're carnivores. We used to be hunters. We, we track by motion. So if things move, you tend to look at it. And, uh, and for those two or three giggles I heard 10 minutes ago, there is a joke in there. And uh, so anyway, I, don't, I, I think it's a good idea. It's a good opportunity when you've got to do uh, a presentation of faculty, uh, when you are trying to encourage people to get their message across, well, here's a way to market. If you're already going to be on screen, you're already going to have a presentation, why not go ahead and get some of your message out there and begin to make your point and, and brand? Um, okay, let's see. Did I lose my voice already? I made a hidden button in the corner for me. Um, thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about why marketing uh, is a good idea and an effective way to not just keep your jobs, but improve uh, your performance, improve the quality of life for your faculty and your staff and your students. Um, I think that marketing is... Uh, is good and successful um, for a really, really simple reason. Um, but I can give you 236 reasons. Anybody have a guess? No, nobody even wants to. Even, nobody even wants to. I give you a hat. <laughs> Anybody takes a guess. Even a bad guess. Even if you get it wrong, I give you a hat. Anybody? Working Sir. Working days. No. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, anyone else? 236. I got a t-shirt. 
first two equal five, and then one more would be six, so therefore it's... Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. 236. In 2002, that's how many billions of dollars were spent in the United States on advertising. 236 billion in one year. That's a lot of money to spend on something that doesn't work. Or rather, something that must be working. Um, okay, a little bit about me, just so you guys have a clue, you know, why this guy who's been around for five months in EdTech is here. And, and I've been having a whole lot of fun, by the way, and I'll tell you all some about what we've been up to. Um, let me show you first, just a, I put together a clip of some of the things I've worked on. It's a nice tune. Hello, this is Walter Cronkite. Your seasonal songs from Ray Benson. I'm Kristen Armstrong. I had everything. A beautiful house. <laughs> Three out of ten people in the United States. <laughs> or online. News at Austin provides current conditions. Yep, those were the University of Texas Longhorn football team. I had to get them in here. Um, okay, nutshell, I have a bachelor's degree in drama. Uh, I got a bachelor's degree in radio, television, film. Uh, I worked for about nine years in the film video industry, working my way up, and produced commercials, music videos, documentaries. Um, I worked on uh, some feature films. I have spent a year and a half producing a laser disc. Yeah, I said laser disc. I am actually that old. Uh, although, admittedly, at the time, we kept asking our client, you know, DVD is kind of out there. It seems to be pretty effective. And, oh, no, everyone has laser discs. Um, but it was a laser disc for U.S. middle schools on history and for Holt Reinhardt Winston. And uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, create an educational product. And it's probably part of why I have a passion and enjoy for the job that I have now. Um, you know, it's nice to make a difference. And I actually met someone last night who was talking about their job as an educational Technologists, and they said, you know, at the end of the day, you just want to make a difference. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I've worked with a lot of country and western stars like uh, Randy Travis. I once uh, talked to Alan Alda on the phone, booking a car for him. <laughs> and uh, and yes, I am from Austin, Texas. So I have worked with Willie. He is very nice and very relaxed. Um, and as far as the name dropping goes, since I'm doing it, I also have met John Mayer, and uh, he's a, a great guy. And, uh, and I've actually met a lot of really great people here at the conference, and it's a tremendous opportunity to, uh, to learn, uh, which is the number one reason why I was here until I found out I was going to present. Um, I owned my own company for about three years uh, doing film video production and uh, obviously uh, learned a lot about marketing and what doesn't work. I also, uh, I don't know if y'all remember the economic downturn in 2001, but it's also proof that uh, no matter how good your marketing might be or your product, uh, you can't sell when no one's buying. And I think that's a really good lesson when you're marketing uh, your services and your technology to your staff and your faculty when you're trying to figure out what you're going to buy next or what you're going to encourage people to use. Is it actually something anyone will buy? Does anyone want this? Because if they don't need it and they don't want it, then as neat as it might be, it might not be the right product for you. Uh, I actually did a little bit of time at UT Law and their media services. And then, as you may have noticed, I, I worked for a 24-hour news channel uh, before I got to this position, uh, cutting promos like mad all day, and uh, which is entertaining work. Basically. Um, I worked on feature films, TV commercials, music videos, web videos, documentaries, CD-ROMs, DVDs. I've written, shot, produced, edited, programmed, and done the graphics. I did it all for a client, every single one of them. And now my client is the University of Texas School of Law. It's my faculty. It's my staff. That's my client. That's who I want to bang the drum and get them to come to me. I want them to be willing to listen to me. I want them to be willing to embrace the things I need them to embrace so that we can move forward with the technology. Um, and clients are you know, a wonderful thing. 
and sometimes clients won't do what you want them to do. So you have to market. Uh, because sometimes, you know, we're not selling Coca-Cola. Uh, we have, uh, for example, a new email client that we're switching over from Eudora to Outlook. Well, we need them to go. And so we need to not just say, you have to do this, but these are faculty members, they're professionals. We need to encourage them, we need to entice them. We need to do some marketing to make it appealing and give them good reasons. And, uh, and I think marketing is important in, in, ha in why you would do that. Um, I think everybody would agree that this is a decent definition if your client is the party for which professional services are rendered. That's what I do. Uh, the definition of those services changes every day, but I haven't had to get coffee yet for anyone. Um, does anybody here think marketing is a bad idea? Is anybody actually actively marketing in your schools? Yeah, you are? What kind of marketing do you do? Uh huh. So how do you tell them? Handouts. Bookmarks. I have to admit, I thought the bookmarks would be fun. A lot of people took the bookmarks. Right. And then, you know. <laughs> yeah, I found that uh, pizza goes a long ways. Right. And it's so just sort of. Right. Well, and you know that's the thing is, is that you you have to you have to give something. Um, you know, marketing so often is is you know it's swag. It's something that appears to be for free. Uh, but what I have now is I have a gentleman who's wearing my school's hat, or hopefully will be, or his child, or his dog. Uh, and, and that that logo now heads out, and then it has an impact on people who see it. And then when those people come back and swing back around to me, and I say I'm from here, even if they don't remember where they saw it. It's made an impression upon them and hopefully given me an end to communicating with them. Yes, sir? Yeah, uh, marketing, marketing can be even more criminal than that. I mean, you can, uh, I personally would go out in the manager of our facility and uh, I'll just press the flesh before the faculty walk into the classroom. Have you had any problems? One on one. Do a, a random phone call out to faculty that I know either use it a lot or have never used it before. Right. How you doing? Uh, working okay? Are you comfortable with the technology? <coughs> and, and we have um, our IT group and our education not in line connected, but, but separate. And, and I'm at trouble getting into their H drive or at trouble Right. Then you know I I you know that over to the IT group and say you know you. But it's kind of it can be subliminal more than. Oh yeah, right? and and I'm going to cover a, a lot of different hows, uh, how you market, and that's one of them. Um, and and what's so important about that though you brought up is is the why. Did they have trouble using some of the technology? Are they using it, and why not? And so part of the reason why you market is 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 that you need to both find out, you've got part of marketing is research. You gotta find out who your target audience is. You gotta find out who these people are, what their habits are, what are they having trouble with, what are they using, what are they not using. And you've got to find out then what are your technologies. You've got to identify what's the need or the potential. You have services you offer, he goes out and he can actually one on one instruct people or solve their problems. Um, but maybe it's a new technology that's not being used, a console, and nobody knows how to make it work, so no one's using it, or they're frustrated, or they avoid the room. Um, but the fact that once you've researched it and you've identified your target audience, and you've identified 
what you have or what you want to get, then you've got to get it in their hands. You've got to get it in play. You've got to make it useful or there's no point in having it. Um, and then, of course, you've got to follow through and earn their trust. So I think it really starts with research is that you, know, you determine who your target audience is. And you know what's funny is that when I first started the job, I thought my main target audience was my faculty. But the faculty are very busy, and they don't necessarily want to sit down and spend a lot of time talking with me about you know, the new tablet PC or some sort of other function. But the faculty assistants, they will listen to. And when they have a problem, they first turn to the faculty assistants. So in many ways, my target audience is both is that I have to hit those staff members. I need to get the faculty assistants on my side. I need to bring them around. I need to educate them on what they need to know. So that when the faculty member steps out his door and goes, email doesn't work, they know I got an email from Mike, and Mike said, email's not going to work today because we're switching over, and you're going to get, or, you know, whatever the answer is. And suddenly the problem solved, the fire's out. And while I would love for them to be able to come directly to me, Frankly, if all the faculty have a problem at once, I'm only one guy. The faculty assistants are an ideal first line of defense for understanding the technology. Um, you know, affordability and compatibility and the learning curve. Because a lot of this stuff costs a ton. Uh, I think in the tablet PC, a guy was talking about, tablet PCs are great. Faculty said they're great. The dean said, eh, it's too expensive to buy for everybody. But the learning curve was simple. The cost is too high. On the flip side, sometimes there are technologies that are just fabulous. But I, I have some faculty member. I have a guy who doesn't use a computer. So if I have a technology that he must use, but he doesn't want to use it, maybe the learning curve is going to be too high in that case. That's one very extreme example. But you have to evaluate that and decide if it's really worth the effort. Um, I research, you know, I'm new to the job, so I've been searching everywhere. I've been looking at periodicals. I've been on the web. I went to newsisfree.com, and I made myself a tech page of RSS feeds and blogs. Yes, faculty are a tremendous resource for researching what you need to know. I go to my faculty members. I wander the halls. If I run across them, hi, how you doing? What have you learned that's new? Or did you know I heard about this? Or how is this working for you? As I get to know their habits, I am slowly beginning to learn where the gaps are, and hopefully I can start to fill them in. But I, I love it when a faculty member says, you know, I know a guy who's using this thing and it's really neat. Really? Well, then I can look into it and see if it's something that we need. And of course, you guys, being here at Cali, Technoids, it's a tremendous uh, opportunity to follow what other people are doing. Um, I know that there's a, a law school and looking at doing uh, um, Grading, online uh, grading software, and I've just lost my brain. And, uh, and it's something I've been looking at, so I say, great, let me know what you find out. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a good way to do your research and find out what's happening around. And then once you've, you've done all your research, you really want to get it in front of their faces. You've got to find a way to get them exposed to the technology. Now, there's the head-on approach, which you, know, you were talking about. You want to avoid that sometimes. You want to be a little more subtle. Because, uh, frankly, we've all been hit head-on by marketing. Um, an umbrella is in your face, but it's not quite so head-on. Why? Because it's useful. It's an actual object you can use. It's functional. You take it with you. You kind of forget you've got it, but the Cali logo kind of hits you all the time. And, and I think that's good. Um, so one of the things that, uh, that I did is I had an opportunity to create a PowerPoint for an event that was not for educational purposes, but my dean, assistant deans, and a lot of my faculty were going to be there. So I made a PowerPoint that was kind of different, a little interesting, with some motion. I had some fun with it. One, it served the purpose of the target of that night. It was going to run in the background during dinner. But the other issue was is that now when I meet with the faculty members and I say, they say, well, I was thinking about learning a little bit about PowerPoint. I said, oh, really? Did you see the Justice Fund thing? Well, yeah, I saw that. I made that. And I can show you in five minutes how to do some of those things if you'd like to sit down now. Or we can make an appointment for later. But it's an opportunity to show them what the tool is capable of without hitting them head on. There's a little bit of exposure instead of just, you don't just have to throw te you know, black text up on a white screen. Um,
And of course, the judge is really photogenic. Isn't he cute? <laughs> He's a really amazing guy. He's an East Texas judge and a big proponent of civil rights, reforming the prisons. And I don't know if y'all know anything about East Texas, but that's pretty brave. <laughs> What was that? I'm he's spry. Um, oh, I talked to him and I'm like, okay, we'll see. I'll let this run now. We're almost to the end of this. And uh, it was actually a 10 minute long piece with a lot of other longer segments. And I kind of compressed it down. Um, no, not at all. This is. Yeah, you, uh, you can use uh, Motion Path. And what I did is I used a mix of, of images, and then I used solids, made shapes, made them transparent, and then applied different motion paths. And you can stack your effects. So you can have something fade and move and all at the same time, and then you can just drag them around. And it's not intuitive, necessarily. You think you had an effect, you're done with that thing. And then PowerPoint says, do you want to do it the same time or later? But you can actually just say, I want them all to be the same time, and then you can actually just stagger them out any way you like. So. Um, and it's exactly that kind of reaction, though, which is for, for not all faculty members, but for some, they look at that and they say, I didn't know that was possible. Great, be happy to tell you. And for them, it, you know, it's an advantage. For the ones who don't want it, that's great because they don't need it. Um, so, you know, after having the, had this, that is one way to market, right? Take this, I think, is a subtler approach. Use my skills take the time, now I've got an in or uh, an opportunity for faculty to see some of what's possible. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Expresso, probably a lot of y'all, some of y'all, online uh, submissions to law reviews. Faculty member uh, brought it up to our attention and, uh, and we thought it was useful, it was productive. So we went ahead and signed on for this, but instead of me sending out an email or a handout saying, here's Espresso, here's what you do, or whatever. We had a faculty member, well-respected faculty member, who sent out the email. So now he's marketing for me, but it's nice because it spreads around. Instead of me being spam, too much of the same message from the same person, it's coming from another faculty member. And he says, here it is, here's what it's about, I like it, I'm using it. By the way, if you have any questions or problems, you can contact Mike Harvey and his number and his email address. So now I've got an introduction I basically have got a nice additional marketing tool by having this faculty member be kind of a sponsor or co-conspirator in this case. And, uh, and yet I still, and, and of course I'm new to the position, so I'm trying to get the faculty to get to know me and to trust me and to turn to me and for me to be able to reach them and find out what they need. Um, and so I think that's, that's another good opportunity. Um, we, we do whole classes and workshops. Um, we had one... Uh, how to build a web page, and so we had an expert on campus come, and faculty, staff, and students came to learn, and it's a good opportunity to, uh, again, uh, give them appreciation for what the people who make the web page do, because uh, they were able to make a simple web page, but then they turn and look at our home page and say, okay, there is some extraordinary effort going on there, um, but at the same time also get them to use the technology. We have web space at UT. Every single person has free web space they can upload to. Um, but if you don't know how to make a web page, then you're just putting documents up and down. And some of these people want to be able to publish personal stuff or they want to be able to add some additional documents and create uh, class spaces. Um, and they can do it inside courseware like Blackboard or they could do it this way. Um, one of the other things that uh, a class that uh, I had to create was we recently migrated from our old Magellan <coughs> voicemail system to Smart Voice, which is unified messaging and really cool. Um, but it was a little different. And so, in this case, what I did is I, uh, again, uh, you know, used PowerPoint and used some nice graphics and tried to make sure that it was, you know, had a little bit of motion and some energy, but it was clear. It's another example, you know, of being, things you can do with PowerPoint. And it's also an ideal way to display this information. We found out that when you read the directions, it didn't make sense to anybody. Um, but when you uh, display them in this fashion, well, it's a keypad and it makes a lot of sense. Um, but this is still marketing in a more subtle sense because they had to learn this information. I could have just given them a handout, but if I get them to come in and talk with me, and if I run through this and it makes sense, 
then I've actually, again, begun that bond of trust, and I've also solved some problems. I've got them using the technology in a simple way. My gosh, Smart Voice has a lot more uh, features and options, but the first thing people need to be able to do with the technology sometimes is walk before they run. And so uh, we wanted to create that uh, opportunity. And, and, all, and, you know, this is just uh, Google Images. I just went and found a picture of a phone, stuck it in there. I put a transparent black solid over it. It's, it's not, you know, something anyone could do. End of slideshow. No, no. I found it, you know, you, I just looked through until I found one that looked good with a nice black background and <coughs> stuck it in. And I mean, yeah, it was, certainly Photoshop's a real advantage sometimes, and you've got to mask things, but... Um, Uh, for the most part, for the mo yeah, well, certainly all of the, the functions of PowerPoint, although um, has anyone noticed the background? Can you all see it? Does anyone know what it is? It's like cows. Cows, thank you. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> wow, anyone else? I'll give a hat for a correct answer. Longhorns, longhorns. There's one way back there. Let's see if you can get it. There we go. Yes, Longhorns. Do you know why it's there? <laughs> Logo. There you go. I didn't say it was a good toss. What? Yeah. Yes, we brand them at the school. That's it. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. He's here all week. He's here all week. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's an opportunity, uh, you know, my, my school, I'm very proud of it. I'm, I'm happy uh, to be there, and I know you guys were going to spend an hour looking at this, and then it was going to be archived to the web someday. And you know what? It's our brand, and, and part of the point of this is, is, is your brand. Now, as an educational technologist, I don't have a logo. It'd be a little bit silly. Um, I don't have a motto, but it might be good to sit down and write out one. If you had a fantasy... What would you want people to think of when they thought of your department, when they think of IT, when they think of your services? Because if you hone that message down, it's going to make your marketing more effective. And, uh, you know, I think making a difference is probably a pretty good one. Um, we hold an annual IT showcase. What's new in IT? What a great opportunity to get people jazzed. It's all about the gadgets. It's all about the toys. So whatever's new, whatever's going on, we make, do y'all have, everybody have fries, do you know? Fries, electronics, yeah, yeah. Well, we're having an IT showcase, so we have to go to fries and see what we can buy that's fun. And, uh, you know, some years uh, there are newer things than others, um, but it, it, it's an opportunity really to, uh, to appeal to the playground mentality, which is that when one kid on the playground has the new glow-in-the-dark auto remote Nerf football, Every other kid starts to want one, too. And so you have to be a little bit careful because it's got to be affordable and the learning curve and all those kinds of issues. But it's an opportunity to bring those gadgets out, to bring out a tablet PC or another uh, object that you want to introduce in your school and get them excited about it. Um, you know, part of the point about all these houses is not, no single one is correct. And you have to determine for your faculty and school and your own personality which ones fit. But you've got to approach it from a lot of different ways and constantly. Right, if you if you just do one week with bookmarks, you make some impact, and the bookmark may stay around. But if you one week do this, and the next month you do this, and then there's this email, and then there's you know this other effort where they're exposed to what you want them to get, the message you want them to get, then you got a great uh, great opportunity. Uh, you know, create something new. It's like the Justice PowerPoint. Um, this is something I made. For alumni, they came to me, and it was an opportunity to kind of introduce people in the law school to Flash. And it's got a good beat.
then we just, uh, it was a little buzz ad and put a little link through and bring them through here. But again, it was an opportunity to show uh, in the right circumstance, here's another tool. And uh, if you haven't used it or if you uh, suddenly you see the potential within this for something you wanted to do, guess what? We can do it. And here's, a, here's something concrete that I can show you that we've done. Um, that would be the wrong PowerPoint. And I actually also played with embedding the flash into uh, the PowerPoint, but uh, it, it stuck in here, but it wouldn't autoplay every time. And so I got to work on that one. Welcome to being in technology, right? Um, the one-on-ones, I think, is the most valuable. Wandering the hallways, the you know, seeing somebody's door open, uh, saying hi. Um, I think most of us have confidence. And when we sit in a group like this, if I ask a question, most of y'all have an initial response to not respond, right? To not stick out or to take that risk of being wrong or being noticed even sometimes. Um, but when you're one-on-one, -on -one, most likely you'll tell me your troubles. And that's what I want from my faculty as I drop by. And I sit down, I said, hi, I'm Mike Harvey. I'm your educational technology coordinator. I work for June. I just want a couple of minutes to, how are you doing? How's your class? What are you using? Is it working for you? <laughs> And based on what they say, I may say, hey, did you know in Blackboard you can do this? No. Can I show you? Great. And then you've just accomplished something good. You made a difference that day. And it grows with every faculty member. And I've literally gone in with faculty assistants and answered one question, and then this one has a question, and I answer this question, and then I answer this one. And then you run for it. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think getting that opportunity and time with the faculty is really important. Um, but you know what, sometimes when you're banging the drum, the beat can be the same too long. And so sometimes change. Change colors, change your attitude, change your energy. Uh, sometimes what reaches one person is not going to reach the other person. And so you have to uh, adjust your message. Um, you know, frankly, when I'm talking to staff members, it's a little different than when I'm talking to the very well-paid faculty member who may have a different outlook or attitude or approach about the kinds of things that I have to say. Um, everybody know all three of these, right? What's this one up here? Amazing, isn't it? Branding. Coca-Cola's been around for forever, right? What did they do a while back? Did they screw up. Everybody remember New Coke? Yeah. Did it work? Ooh, do you think they did marketing research ahead of time? I, huh? Not enough? <laughs> yeah, th this can happen to anybody in your job. And, and I would say that it's, uh, it's just always a lesson learned, is that you can get excited about something. There's a new technology. You can actually talk to a couple of your favorite faculty members, and they can say, oh, it sounds good. And then you could roll it out, or you could buy into it. You could then introduce it and find out that it just doesn't really work well for a variety of reasons. And, uh, and, you know, marketing is, is, you know, a little bit of alchemy. It's not a fine science because it's based not on the product but on influence. It's based on people and interaction. And so that's a variable that you have to allow for. Um, what? Yeah, and, there, and there's a lot of speculation that they did it on purpose. You know, that the whole point of it was to, uh, was to get, uh, get people interested in Coca-Cola again. And... You know, actually, I, from what I understand, market share, it, that worked. But it seems a little risky. You can, you know, I drank some Dr. Pepper for a while. We have Dr. Pepper in Seattle. Um, the other thing I was going to bring up, though, has anybody noticed on Google's site uh, how they're approaching their branding? Right? They, yeah, but there's something even more basic, right, that's, that's a little more unusual. Is there anything else that has color on their site when you go to Google? All right? Is there any other ads? Is there much distraction? It's a big white page with a place to type text and their logo. And they tweak it and they play with it and it's playful and that's good to remember. A little bit of humor goes a long ways. But it's tremendous branding. You go there all the time. You're only there for just a couple seconds. But really the only thing that registers is their logo over and over again. And uh, I guess... Microsoft seems to have some skill at uh, 
what is the William Gates building that we're in? <laughs> um, I wanted to play y'all for uh, talking about appeal. I wanted to play y'all another piece that I created. Um, the target audience was uh, museum uh, had a Warhol exhibit coming, and they knew that all the people who go to museums were going to come visit. But they wanted to try and get people who don't go to museums, maybe have heard of Warhol, maybe not even don't even know who he is, who might just come down and give it a go. So we made this. Andy Warhol's work defined the culture and transformed contemporary art. For the first time in Central Texas, the Austin Museum of Art presents Andy Warhol. Experience more than 80 paintings and prints, interactive displays, and Warhol TV in this unprecedented show. See Andy Warhol, August 24th to November 9th at the Austin Museum of Art, downtown at 9th and Congress. For a complete list of events, go to newsatoustin.com. So, you know, the whole point of it was to get the art in front of their faces, uh, tell them when, tell them where, have some motion and excitement, keep it kind of simple. And uh, it turned out that they had the best attendance that they'd ever had. And they had people coming, waiting in line. And uh, it was a really good campaign. And I, uh, I kind of took from it that, you know, keeping it simple, stupid, <laughs> kiss, is good to remember sometimes and that you can get overly complex with your explanations and you can go too far with what you're trying to accomplish. So keep it simple. Uh, pick a thing and accomplish that and make the message about that simple, clear, easy to understand and give people that opportunity. And the people who want to go deeper generally will come to you or be obvious. Um, <coughs> Does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Does anybody else have any other market? I would love to hear from marketing strategies or what you're accomplishing at your own schools. Uh, do you, does anybody? Yeah. So you, when you first do that, you get a few users, but then you get word of mouth. I mean, frankly, from a penetration point of view, you're not going to get 100% of your faculty to use something like this, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that if you can start off and getting two or three to use it, and there's student awareness, staff awareness, and that, then you can go on to other marketing. But word of mouth does work for you, and uh, and so you know, you, sometimes you just got to get your foot in the door. So uh, you know, how did you follow up though? I mean, did you? So crucial is that, like I talked about, is you identify your audience, you identify your product, you market it, but you got to follow through. You have to build the trust, build the trust, and you've got to have a good, successful either your service, the product, so that it's reliable. Because uh, you know what I found is is that my faculty are wonderful folks who need to teach, and they don't need to mess with the IT. So it's got to be easy. It's got to be clean and simple. And there's you know. Otherwise, it's just who's got the time for that? I and mean, they they got 200 emails a day as it is. Um, 
Yes, please. Um, good news travels fast, but bad news travels faster. Yes. Um, <laughs> Are you trying to tell me something? No, no, no. When you stumble, say, you know, as we always do, right. how do you short circuit and cut out that, that you, you memory don't. of people? You, from, you, oh, you did make a mistake. You, yeah, you, well, you, you, don't, you don't erase the mistake, whether it's yours or theirs. Right. The stumble is marketing. It's still an opportunity. It's, it's, it's a chance to say, guess what? that sometimes the technology doesn't work and it's okay. Guess what? I'm a human being, you're a human being, everybody makes mistakes, let's learn from that and move forward, right? I mean, the law professors do that in the class. They ask a question, the student answers, crack, lightning comes down and they strike them down, but at the end of it then they say, okay, what do we learn from that, right? The Socratic method, you ask the question and you move forward. So I think you use it as the example. And, uh, you know, unless of course you've amputated, you know, metaphorically an arm of the department, then you run. So you're saying, you know, downplay the expectations and then it's magic and, yeah. Well, you know, I, I actually found that uh, we have quite, and I'm guessing you all do too, we have quite a spectrum of folks. Everything from the, the faculty members, like, ah, I don't know, I don't use this, maybe it won't work, to the man, to the guy who's got it all happening, from the document camera to his PowerPoint and everything else. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, is your question, how do you deal with that person to encourage well, them or? You know, just trying to, you know, taper off, not to cut them off. Well, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that you know. I think, it, I think the best thing that I could see to do because you know I'm not there to alter my faculty, and I can't tell them how to teach, and I don't want to get into that world. I don't even want to imply that I should have that kind of, of influence. But, but from a negativity point of view, what I can do is, is with the one on ones, with the demonstrations, and with the uh, improvement in the services, is inspire them to reach a point of confidence where they don't say that anymore, simply because they believe it will work. They have used it and it works. You have walked them through it and they're comfortable with it. And that hopefully it will disappear through example. Um, you know, I think, it, I think that's, it's a fine line because you want to walk up there and you want to, because what you do is technology, you want to say, it's just this button and you're good. Um, but when the classroom starts is, you know, where I'm out and, and I, so I just, you know, it's like letting your children, uh, bad metaphor, sorry. But you know, when they walk out the doors, you got to give them all the tools and do your best to instruct, and then you watch and see, and then hopefully next semester maybe you can learn if they're still hesitant about that. There's a reason. Then you go find that guy and you find out why they're negative about it. Maybe in a one-on-one -on -one environment where you know they can just say, "I just really don't like using." It. Maybe they're, maybe if it, you put it on the web and made it a link in Explorer instead of a DVD, they'd be happier. Maybe they, yes, sir. We're uh, running a very small experiment right now uh, with faculty who, for whatever reason, uh, want to use the stuff, it just seems to confuse them. Done is suggested that uh, we will hire someone in their class and we give them a list of names of people who are competent to set the thing up and run it for them in class. They're actually in the class. Okay. And then we have hired those people, part-time sort of research types, to be in class. And that, at least at this point, well, that person simply, their duty is to get up uh, before class starts, make sure it's all set up. And if there's something other than just up and down, they will actually go up and help out. I think that's for the <laughs> very interesting. Involve the faculty right. always in the selection. Good. Impose it on them. We want them to work together as sort of a, yep. a team. Some of the faculty. And, and that's one of those uh, again fine you know double edged swords in that you you've solved the problem with faculty who realistically probably were never going to cross the gap otherwise. 
there may just be no way to get them there. And on the flip side, if you get into enabling all the faculty with this, then what door have you opened where you now have a payroll of students? Um, but I think it, on a, on a per-party basis, it, it may be the best solution. That's a very interesting one. I haven't heard that, um, but I like the idea. Uh, I have a, a faculty member I sent a URL to in an email as a solution, and I got back a response, that's nice, what do I do with it? Okay. Um, you know, it's easy to assume that you know what to do with it. And yet, for some of these folks, uh, they're thinking and doing other things, and this information hasn't absorbed for whatever reason. So, you know, my job is to find a solution for that. And in your case, if you have that kind of a party, that's a good solution. And uh, the student's probably happy to pick up some extra, extra change for law books. So. We've run another experiment in trying to train faculty on how to use Blackboard and made it as flexible as possible as we hired uh, a researcher. And that person will actually go to the faculty member's house if they want to and sit with them in their home and wow. work on the basics of Blackboard. And that has worked very, very well. <laughs> For whatever reason. Wow, house calls. flexibility, but and it's one-on-one, -on -one and it's very peaceful. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and our Blackboard usage has gone up dramatically. But, you know, part of the point, though, there, and I think it's a good one, is, is that people learn better often when they're comfortable. If you're nervous or if you're on the spot, um, if you feel like you're going to be look like you're stupid, then there's a reluctance. And, and some faculty members probably, even in the school, there's a, they have a certain stature they have to maintain. And so you get them home, and they're in their comfortable chair. And so, OK. I, uh, I'm going to try and avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. One of the things when I'm dealing with Only one? <laughs> yeah, no, no, is uh, propagate the theology of technology because <laughs> the message. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. I've had faculty come to me asking for either situations. that may not be conducive to using that here with what they're actually teaching. No more noise on the system in their lecture. Right out. Don't bother using anything. Use the blackboard. Right. I mean, I think as technologists, we have to be willing to look at also, I mean, and with that, you build up more credibility with your faculty when they really do need the service. Yes. And I can say this with some authority because 500 to 700 setups of technology a semester um, out to the various classes. Our faculty are very, very heavy into technology. down pretty much, uh, covering a lot of what you said, what faculty habits are, right. where they want equipment, how they want it set up, what they're teaching and what they want. We have more of a maybe the kind of institution you are, it may be where you are in the food chain, as dealing with your faculty members, sure. but this all comes into play with your. Well, and and I think that the you know the the de the delineation of customer and uh, you know vendor versus you know peer to peer, I think that's really kind of a gray area, and that I, I approach it from a marketing point of view, from a client point of view, because I want to make sure and be clear and identify all the things that I need to accomplish. Who why, how, when, what. Um, but the reality is is that I am a partner in the educational process. And, uh, and, and I think you're, you're so right in that you do have to, because you're the expert, be willing to put yourself on the line and let them know this is not 
a good composition or this is not an effective use of the technology. Ultimately, the faculty members get to make a choice, but yeah, you've got to, you've got to be the person, since you are the expert, to say, I wouldn't use this, this is better, let me show you why. Um, and and some, a lot of that does have to do with the relationship and your school and the environment. Um, and I'm fortunate enough in that I've found that, uh, that most of the faculty at UC Law are quite willing to listen to my recommendations and, uh, and uh, to take suggestions and to be uh, collaborative in the process, um, time permitting. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, and I do send him food every day. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that's a valid point in that, you know, it does flow from above, and if you have the dean saying, mandate, you know, or I'm behind this, then, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the dean's school. Um, and I think that uh, uh, targeting, uh, you know, your marketing when you figure your target audience, and part of your goal is to say, uh, you know, my department needs to accomplish this, and you have to look at what's the most effective <laughs> dean simple way to get it done. Maybe to begin with the dean and say, this is what we're looking at. A technology the law school needs to go here. If you would endorse this and sign on budgetarily, and you know, actually to this, you know, the faculty and say, this is what we're going to do. You're done, and you can move forward, and you don't need to do, uh, you know, some of the more one-on-one -on -one approach or, or niggly. Good point. Talk is great technology. Yeah, there are what three kinds of learning where people can learn abstract, they can learn through watching, and they have to learn through doing. And you have to evaluate with uh, anyone that you're working with, one-on-one -on -one especially, is it wh where are they comfortable? And a lot of times I'll walk in and I'll say they want to learn something. I'll say, great, um, do you want to drive or me? And someone will say, great, please sit down. I don't want to touch it. And I'll start there. But like you, if I can get it in their hands, it, it's good. Um, Right, but yeah, but they trust you. They feel like they're getting good service and they're being protected, and they they're not going to look silly or have that bad awkward moment in class where oh, I just don't know how to you know you want to help them avoid that and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I, I love that because if I had any problems today at all, I was going to be able to go. Well, the head of research couldn't so. Um, and we're running kind of short. I'm going to just show you real quick. Uh, uh, we are rolling out uh, from Eudora to uh, Outlook. And so we had the opportunity to, uh, to have to begin to preface this with the, the deans and the faculty and say, guess what's coming? Here's what it's about. This is sales, you know, is to tell them, guess what we're going to be doing. So I actually, in this case, and I don't know how effective it was, but I thought it would be fun to kind of do a little branding to going to be going to Outlook and Exchange, and we're going to go to Windows XP in the future, and just kind of have these, you know, little animations. I think maybe probably made people dizzy, um, <laughs> but you know, you try different things. It's part of what I talked about about change and energy. You, you check them out and you see what's working. Um, but in this case, you know, I wanted to make something that was pretty, and I went into Microsoft and I got their logo and I got the 
boxes and I went and found some nice cable picture. Now I did go into Photoshop and do a little bit of stuff on that one. And, uh, you know, it was an opportunity. So when they sat down, they didn't just see Outlook coming at you. You will die. You know, it's. Um, but instead they saw, oh, wow. And you know what? Look at this, right? Pretty bit of Outlook here. We got the, and what's the spam, less spam? Does anybody think they're before that? I, I have not met a person in academia who wouldn't be thrilled with less spam. And uh, I don't think they even care about the rest of the stuff. If you promised them less spam, they'd be thrilled. Um, and, you know, so again, it was just some screenshots and opportunity, but it's, it's branding. We're migrating to Microsoft's Outlook in summer of 2004. So I'm hitting them with the message over and over again, giving them the look of the product. It looks nice. We're talking, it, it, and this is, was a lot longer, but to get the point across to them that this was simple. You can use it work, home, or on the web. And that's a good message for your faculty so that when you go to their home, you still have access to what you have to teach them. And uh, what's your name, sir? Bob. Bob. Bob will be coming to your home next week <laughs> to help you with any of your issues. And, uh, and of course, we have a lovely law school, so anytime I can use a nice panoramic picture, always reuse it. Anyone knows this was also in the Justice Fund. I re repurpose all the time. It's a, it's a beautiful, wonderful thing. Um, I had, I had. Oh, um, yeah. Beans <laughs> were. Cool. I'm glad to hear it. It uh, means I get to keep my job for one more week. Um, marketing educational technology. Um, you know, it was funny. When John told me we were talking about topics and stuff, and, and I, my background with all this stuff in video and media and sales and commercials, and I've sold chicken. You know, when you make a chicken commercial, eventually you're just like, what's the purpose of my life? <laughs> you know, you're standing there telling the actor, don't take a bite, it has pins in it because, you know, the food lady has pinned perfect pieces of fried fat to it to make it look good. Um, <laughs> suddenly, you know, you, you come in and you, you have a job like this where you do make a difference. And, and I don't teach students, and I'm not making new lawyers and making new lawyers better or more ethical or, or more able to do their jobs. What I am doing is helping to enable the faculty to do that job better. And I, I take a lot of pride in that opportunity. And so I need to get that across to my faculty and to my staff. And I, I want them to use the things that they want to use, that they need. And I don't want to pepper them or bother them with the things that aren't going to be productive. And in the end, this is all about you know, educating. And, uh, and so you know, John told me, he said, some people are, are for marketing and some people are really against it. So he said, beware when you hold this session. You know, you may have some people in here who are going to be, oh, I don't want to market, you know, I do, just put the technology out there. And, and uh, actually, I have to say, I haven't heard that, so if you've been quiet, thank you. And, um, any last comments from anyone? Any other last thoughts? Because I'm, then, thank you all very much. The last hat. It's yours.